event everyone, Coney is here. Today I'm flying from Raleigh, Durham, North Carolina to Richmond, Virginia. I'm flying a Beechcraft 350i King Air. I've set a flight level of 3,000 feet. Let's go ahead and go inside and get started. Take off the parking brake and let's go forward. Alright, let's go ahead and lift off. Land the gear up. Flaps up. KH413, continue for north departure. I will contact you next when you leave my airspace. All right, I'll turn Rolling into Tower our KH heading. For north Alright, flaps were actually down both detents, so I just raised them up again. They're fully uh, retracted. So now we're starting to gain speed. It might have been what those beeping warnings were earlier. I'm going to go ahead and engage autopilot. So this should get us to 3,000 feet. This will keep us on our course towards Richmond. Alright, let's go ahead and go outside and take a look. Alright, looks like a pretty populated area. And I flew in here the other day, it was raining like mad, so I'm glad to see the weather has changed. Okay, it right, looks like we're at altitude. I'm going to level off the throttle. Alright, let's reset the view, and I'm going to switch to the drone. Alright, so it'll be interesting to sort of look around and see what we see here. What body of water that is? Squawk one two zero zero. Frequency change approved. KH four one three. Raleigh approach. KH four one three is type Beechcraft King Air eight miles east of eight November Charlie eight. Request flight following. KH four one three. Raleigh approach. Squawk three one one five. Almost thought this might have been a golf course, but. Doesn't really look like it from here. KH413 radar contact, 8 miles east of 8 November Charlie 8. 
It's interesting that you'll see what look like residential houses out in the middle of a agricultural field. Copy KH four one three. I'm going to go in uh, to the external view. All well, the dials look okay. Go inside. So the terrain looks pretty much the same. Nothing of particular interest to look at. Just need to make our way there safely. Kind of an interesting view out the front. I'm going to go back outside. I chose this wheels up red livery today. I'm not super happy with it. But that's okay. Interesting that that's the text there is backwards. Huh. Curious about that. It's probably not supposed to be backwards. I'm going to go back to the drone and reset it. So I have a new set of Logitech panels. I have a switch panel and a multi-panel. So this flashing strobe, I should be able to turn off by clicking here. And it's still going. Okay, that's probably not the strobe then. Maybe that's the beacon. Let's see. No, that's still going. I'm not sure which of these lights that is then. Oh, that was nav. Okay. Turn beacon back on. Ah, there's beacon right there. So if I turn that off, beacon off, don't see that anymore. Strobe, I think, might actually be in the front. Okay, yeah, I don't see any blinking here, so if I hit strobe, now we're getting that strobe. 
we hit nav, we should see greens light up and reds line up on the other side. Yep. I'm not sure where the landing lights show up. I think they might actually point back towards the inside of the, you know, the fuselage of the plane. Uh, taxi lights, I'm not seeing those either. So I'll have to check those out later. The only other light is a panel light. If I go back inside, I mean the only other switch I should say. If I turn this off, then the backlighting disappears. Um, it's also got buttons for de-icing, pilot heat, um, mastery batteries, master battery switch, and all that sort of stuff. It's pretty nice. I'll put a picture at the end of the video. back inside. A little quieter in here. Really not much to look at. Just um, a bunch of very similar terrain. No noticeable landmarks. So we do have a while to go. Let's go play with the drone a little bit more. So go outside. Reset the drone view. And this time we will let the plane go. And so let's just look around here a little bit more carefully. I kind of like these bodies of water.
some kind of a bridge over here. Maybe that's a pipe. No, I guess that's a bridge. Okay. Cars are going through, phasing in and out of these little bridges. So that's kind of funny. Basically, the cars are just supposed to look like decoration. They're not supposed to be that accurate. Um, gotta wonder why this breaks here. Probably two pieces of data that don't quite match up perfectly. And that's funny to watch cars will just... You know, they're, you know, they're driving in between two lanes going the other direction. Very strange. Trucks colliding into each other and becoming twice as long. <laughs> It might actually be nice if they did a little better job. I mean, they're supporting ultralights and other kinds of smaller, shorter, you know, lower altitude planes. So they ought to get the traffic stuff working a little better, probably. Let's go check on the plane. Seems to be fine. Okay, where else can we go look here? Something over in this direction is blinking, it's probably an airport. So let's go over there and check that out. This must be a freeway here with the uh, roads going through the forest, that's interesting. Okay, so where is this beacon? There it is. Mecklenburg Brunswick Regional. Okay. All these flat grassy areas make me think of golf courses. That looks like it could Walking be a golf course. Okay, so that is a tiny little rinky-dink airport, but I'm sure it works. It's kind of too bad we can't land the drone and then climb into a plane down here and take off with it. You'd think there'd be a way to do that. Maybe a mod. Oh, somebody just started up and they're taking off. Interesting. Well, that all seems pretty realistic. Oh, and he's going too. Okay, where are they going? Is he, <laughs> is he just going to turn around and park? And then this guy's kind of stopped. Looks like a luggage conveyor or something. This must be a fueling station or something like that. Let's go take a look at the beacon here. Got the drone going a little bit too fast. It's a little hard to dial stuff in. Let's see, maybe I can slow that down. Uh, zero, yeah, that arrow's not gonna work. Okay. The light doesn't seem to emit precisely from the center of the lighting fixture. That's interesting. It's coming over off on the side slightly. Would not have expected that. 
but that's okay. Again, these are things you're supposed to see from way up in the air, so they're not supposed to really matter. Um, you'd have to be really picky to insist that that stuff all be rendered perfectly. Alright, I'm going to go back to the plane now. Got to slowly build back all these textures. Take it a while to adjust to the new geographic location. much to do at this point, um, but what I feel like doing is turning off autopilot and taking care of that myself, just for good practice. Alright, so I'm now under pilot control. I fly with a Thrustmaster um, Hotas Flight X. Would kind of like a yoke, but this actually seems to be more versatile. Um, I like the two hands on the yoke idea, but I found I can put both hands on the stick and get the same kind of stability. So that seems to be okay. Although it might be nice to have the option to switch back and forth. Let's get us back on course a little bit better here. So it's been much more convenient with the, uh, the Logitech avionics panels, especially um, autopilot. It's difficult to use the mouse and you know, you hit these buttons while also doing other stuff at the same time while the engine, I mean, while the plane's jostling around. So that could be kind of tough. So this is nice. Of course, I have it off now, but it'll let me do the landing gear, um, basically everything I need to do. Um, I can adjust the pitch trim really finely, which is nice. And so I can just kind of get it up to exactly where I want a fine level of control. It's very nice. Um, it, the knob goes backwards than I was expecting. You dial down on the knob to bring the nose up and vice versa. But um, anyway, just the level of control is so much nicer than the buttons on the throttle stick. So, yeah, just making really tiny little adjustments. The kind of adjustments you can also make by reducing your speed, and so I can drop my throttle a bit here, and that should nose us down a little bit. Still kind of heading in the up direction. Let's just trim that a little down. Yeah, another nice thing is now that I've got these additional buttons, I can reassign some equivalent buttons on the flight stick and throttle stick. Um, so I've got trim and trim there, flaps there. 
that kind of stuff. So, uh, so that could be handy for other functions that I don't currently have access to without like the keyboard. I kind of feel like I might have gotten us off course. That's okay. I just need to turn. Have been not been looking at the compass rows. Of course, if I'm worried about it, I just need to turn autopilot back on navigation. That'll get us back on course. We're getting close enough now that I want to begin dropping speed. So I'm going to put throttle down to about 25%. Uh, landing gear warning was triggered by the throttle position, but that was when I bottomed it out. We're now back out up to about 25%, I think. Let's see what this one says. Yeah, 30%. Something. All right, so momentarily, I believe autopilot will turn into the heading. Pull throttle back some more. I don't really want to be at this altitude. I'm sorry, at this yeah, at this altitude. So let's pull the throttle back some more. Okay, now we're turning. Just adjusted altitude. Let's see if we can get the plane to abide by that. One one eight decimal two for KH four one three. Atomic approach KH four one three four thousand six hundred feet. KH four one three atomic approach continue as planned. Altimeter two nine er decimal nine er two. So I found the panel a little bit confusing only in there's a flight level change button here that doesn't have a matching button on the multi-panel. It does have an IAS setting for airspeed. Sometimes those terms are kind of used interchangeably. I think they're sort of uh, reciprocals of each other in terms of their functionality. But it looks like if I just turn off altitude, autopilot mode, set a new altitude, and then put it back on, it will actually um, follow that. So that's working just fine. I think that's essentially the equivalent. And then I can adjust the vertical airspeed if I want. Bring the throttle all the way down to the bottom. I get that landing gear warning. Not quite ready to turn landing gear on yet. Cleared for Charlie Airspace KH413. Anyway, we're continuing to slow down, which is good. Going to need to slow down a bit faster. I'll put the flaps down as soon as we get down into range.
Normally I might now I probably would have turned or I would have put down the gear, landed gear, but um, I've seen the co-pilot do that later, so I'm thinking maybe that's better. You know, closer to when you're actually going to land, because it does increase instability. It slows you down, which is nice. Okay, we're in flap range, so I'm going to put the flaps down to halfway. That should get us slowing down. I'm going to take autopilot off. Pilot should have asked for landing. I did set the airport I wanted to land at, but for some reason it's not taking. Richmond Tower KH four one three is eight miles southwest. Of Seems the like that's been a problem in my last few flights. It's not abiding by my uh, flight plan for some reason. Four one three Richmond Tower. Flight three in runway two. Altimeter two nine or decimal nine or two wind two three six precise. Fly straight in runway 2KH413. Alright, I think we can maybe blend our way into this. So I'll just try to get a little bit more altitude and then turn into it. I'm burning off speed in the process, which is helpful. Okay, let's try to turn back into it. I'm going to give it some throttle because we need some speed. Going a little bit too fast. I'm going to go up to halfway point. Typically I'd put the flaps down all the way, but I don't think I need to. I'm going to try just keeping them at halfway, see if that makes the landing a little bit more stable. Okay, back down to about 30% throttle. Looks like we have been cleared to land. Okay, trying to nose down and see where the runway is. Okay. So I'm going to hug the right side, try to stay visually centered on the center of the runway. Yeah, we're definitely going too fast. Actually, we're going way too fast. I'll go ahead and put the landing gear down. I think maybe I do need the, the flaps all the way down, or else I'm not going to slow down enough. Okay, I've got the throttle all the way down. That triggered the landing gear warning. Flaps are now fully extended. That's slowing us down. That's helping. Um, I still feel like I don't need them all the way down, typically. And... I'd like to do a better job of managing my speed and momentum coming into these landings so I didn't have to suddenly drop from 180 back down to, you know, 120. Can we give it some throttle? We're starting to drop a little bit fast, faster than I'd like. I still think we're okay though. Let's see. Do need to nose down. Drop a little bit more to keep us from going any faster. Okay, I'd like to go a little slower than this. I just have a tendency to hit the tarmac going too fast. So let me see if I can do a better job of maintaining a good speed. Looks like we're gonna 
drop out of the air if I don't give it some more throttle, because we're not quite there yet. Okay, still got a ways to go here. Alright, I think I can make it without having to do any more thrust. I'm going to try to hover here. Just drop the rear wheels down only. Okay, rear wheels. Front wheels. Alright, brakes. That was actually a pretty nice landing. I'm very happy about that. Okay, the flap should go back up. And we'll just make our way to parking. Actually, we need to get off the runway and ask them for parking. The flight stick lets you rotate it as an alternate rudder control, and I'm finding that a lot easier to use for things like taking off and landing, and then pedals are handy for ground taxiing, but I need some more practice before being able to keep the plane going down the runway stable with the pedals. It's much easier to do that with the handle. Okay, we are in Richmond, Virginia. Let's come to a stop. One, two, one decimal nine, or KH four, one, three, Hit the parking brake. Okay. And let's contact ground. Taxi to parking. Richmond ground, KH four one three taxi to parking. KH four one three taxi to general aviation parking via taxiway alpha. Taxiing to General Aviation Parking using Taxiway Alpha KH413. Oh, it's right there. Okay, nice. We stopped right next to the parking spot. That's always a nice thing. Nice and smooth, okay. Parking brake. Now the switch panel has an engine knob on it, but if I hit that, set that to off, I don't think the engines actually go off, so I'll have to find out how to do that properly. Nevertheless, I can turn them off with the keyboard. And go through their cool down cycle. And go outside for a minute, look around. Alright, here's the drone. So this is Richmond Airport. Probably not a handcrafted... Eh, it doesn't look too bad though. Looks like a real airport. A lot of cars parked. Kind of curious what they use for car models. Oh, we're still in slow mode. That's just way too slow. Okay. Set this to, I don't know, something like that. Alright, just a bunch of random cars of some kind. Looks like a very boxy BMW or something. Alright, let's go back in the plane. Alright, so uh, engine should be off. I should be able to turn the plane off with one button press. 
and that's it. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to share, like, and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.